Okay, welcome to Physical Science. We're going to get started with Unit 1, Concept 1, Notes about Lab Basics. So we're going to talk about safety and equipment. Um, this class has a ton of labs in it. So even though some of this may be stuff you've learned before, it's really important that we go over how to act appropriately and what equipment you're going to be using so that you're prepared. So a couple of general guidelines just to get started. Always read the lab through in its entirety before doing anything else. It's so important you have an idea of what you're doing before you get started so that you can ask any questions before you get in the middle of things and don't know what you're doing and end up getting hurt or um, breaking glassware or something like that. Also, always keep your lab table or desk, um, wherever you're working, neat and organized. Most of the time when people end up spilling something or breaking something is because they accidentally bump their binder, their notebook, and knock something over. So we want to keep our area really, really clean while we're working to avoid any mistakes like that. If there's ever an emergency, always tell the teacher before doing anything else. Even if you think it's not a big deal and you can pick up the broken glass yourself, please let me know because I want to know because sometimes it's, it's a bigger deal than you think and we really need to make sure we clean up properly and we handle it properly. So please, please, please tell me if anything happens. Also, this is not how we should be acting in lab at all. We need to take labs seriously. Never goof around. I'm going to go ahead and throw out that I think like 90% of the injuries or broken instruments or whatever that's ever happened in my class has been because the person is messing around. So please take lab seriously. When in doubt, ask me. You know, I want to help you. I don't want to baby you and hold your hand through the whole process, but I do want to help you. So please ask questions um, before you just assume something and then end up making a mistake that could be dangerous. Some equipment that's going to help us be safe are safety goggles. You're going to wear these when we're using chemicals or fire and you're going to keep them on until we're entirely done cleaning up. That's really important. Even if you wear glasses, you still need to wear goggles because these have the nice all-around protection. Lab apron you're going to wear to protect your clothing um, from any spills. And then heat resistant gloves is a fancy way of saying oven mitts. And you'll wear those um, to avoid burning yourself when working with hot materials. In case of a fire, there's a couple of things we're going to do first just to prevent fires in the classroom. One is you'll never, ever, ever walk away from an open flame or a hot plate. So anytime we're using heat, someone in your lab group needs to be there and standing near it. Also, you should keep your hair tied back when working in lab so that you don't lean over and it gets caught in a flame and catches on flat fire. Um, same for using wearing loose clothing or long jewelry. Um, we're not going to do that in lab either because you could lean over and your scarf or your loose sweater could again get caught in the flame and um, cause a fire. If there is a fire, um, we'll use a fire extinguisher. Um, how you use a fire extinguisher is pulling um, the safety guard, aiming, um, squeezing the handle, and then using a sweeping motion. But if a person's on fire and a fire blanket is available, that's going to be our best bet because it's kind of this thick blanket you can wrap someone in, kind of like a burrito, and we can kind of beat the fire out of them using that blanket, um, which is a little safer for a human than the fire extinguisher because a fire extinguisher um, releases chemicals, and that just puts a bunch of chemicals on someone if we use it. Speaking of chemicals... No eating or drinking in lab. You never know what could contaminate what you're eating and drinking, and we don't want you getting any chemicals in your mouth whatsoever. So you should never taste a chemical. Even when smelling, you shouldn't just take a whiff. You should waft the chemical, um, which I will show you in class how to waft. You should wear gloves when handling toxic chemicals like these. Also, you should always dispose of chemicals correctly. Not everything can go down the drain. Some things have special disposals, so make sure you ask. And if there's a spill, again, let us know because you can't just wipe up some chemicals. Some of them have a more extensive cleanup process. If you get a chemical on yourself, the two pieces of equipment we will use are the eye wash and the safety shower. So the eye wash, you'll actually, it's like a water fountain for your eyes. You'll actually rinse your eyes for about 15 minutes. And then the safety shower is 
is exactly what it is. It's a shower um, for rinsing the chemicals off your body. Um, when using glassware, one thing to make note of is that hot glass looks exactly like cold glass. So never just assume that something um, is room temperature. So anytime we're using heat, make sure you're using some protective equipment for that. If glass is broken, it has a special disposal, not the trash can. Because if you put the shards of glass in, it'll rip the back and it just creates a really, really big mess. If glassware is cracked, make sure you let me know before using it because when we heat it or if you used a chemical, it could cause it to shatter and make a bigger mess. And it's really preferred that you wear closed-toed shoes and long pants when we're working in lab because that is the best attire um, to protect yourself from broken glassware or chemical spills or anything like that and to protect your skin. That's really important. All right, so now is a time where you want to make sure that you know where the safety equipment is located. So make sure in your classroom you know where is the fire blanket if there is one, where's a fire extinguisher, where's the eye wash or the safety shower. Um, if you don't have these things, where's the nearest one? Is there a broken glass disposal? Is there a safety goggles container? Where are the lab aprons held? Those are all things you need to be aware of before we start doing lab. All right, and last, we're gonna to touch on some lab equipment that we're gonna be using. Every piece of lab equipment is designed for a specific job, and there's so much lab equipment out there that we're really just gonna narrow the list down to what you may be using in this class this year. So just know you're probably gonna come into contact with a lot more equipment in the future. So first is a mortar and pestle. We use this to grind solids into a powder. Um, you may have one of these in your kitchen for grinding up herbs. Um, when cooking, but um, that is something we will use in lab. This also looks like a contact on the right, but it is actually called a watch glass. And the way we will be using the watch glass is as a lid for a beaker to prevent splattering when we're heating things in a beaker. Some specific glassware you need to know. You need to know this graduated cylinder. Notice all of the lines. This is because graduated cylinders are the best at making precise volume measurements. We can get really, really specific with these. The Erlenmeyer flask is the best for heating. Notice that narrow top that keeps heat contained and it also makes it kind of easy to mix things, swish them around in that Erlenmeyer flask. But notice there are um, numbers so you can also measure um, and just hold chemicals in them too. And then the beakers can kind of do everything. They're just not the best at anything. But this is definitely your like all purpose glassware. You can hold, mix, heat, measure, all of that stuff. And then last you have the test tube. This is what we'll do some smaller chemical reactions in. You hold test tubes in a rack. We, that kind of keeps them all upright. And then if you ever need to transfer a test tube that is hot um, or hold it over a flame, we're going to hold it with this test tube holder. When heating, make sure the mouth um, of the test tube, so right here, is tilted away from you and the other group members you're working with because there will be steam and heat and um, things coming out of it, and we don't want that in your face. Now, you should be wearing safety goggles, but we still don't want you inhaling all of that, so we're always going to tilt it away from us. Speaking of heating, two main ways we're going to heat things. One is with a hot plate, and then one's with a Bunsen burner. So the hot plate's a little bit easier. It's electrically powered, so you just plug it into the wall. Um, it works like a little mini stove top. Whereas the Bunsen bur burner is gas powered, so you have to plug it into a gas line and then light it so you have a flame. Um, this one's a little bit more high maintenance too because look at all the accessories you need. So you usually need like the ring stand and then this iron ring and then this wire gauze just to hold a beaker above the flame. So it kind of needs a little bit more than the hot plate, which you could just set a beaker on, which is kind of nice. But it also heats things way faster, so there's kind of pros and cons to both. We'll be using both in this class. All right, and then the last few you should definitely know, just measuring tools. So we use a digital scale for measuring mass, and the unit that would be in is usually grams. We use meter sticks for measuring length. We're going to be using metric units in this class. And then thermometer um, will me measure temperature, usually in Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. And then for transferring things, these beaker tongs are great for moving around or just holding a hot beaker and not burning yourself. We still want to have oven mitts on there just in case. The funnel is for transferring liquids from a larger container to a smaller. You may have one at your house um, and use it for different things. The spatula or the scoopula is a fancy word for it. It's just basically a fancy kind of spoon that scoops chemicals out of containers um, just to be used. 
And then to transfer liquids, we have two options. Um, we have a pipette and a dropper. So the pipette, you'll notice, has dashes and it has numbers on it. So if you need to transfer a specific or precise amount of liquid, you're going to need to use the pipette. So if I need to transfer two milliliters of a chemical, I'm going to need to use the pipette. But if I'm just transferring drops, like I only need four drops of an indicator, then I'm going to use just the dropper. And it'll just release the chemical one drop at a time. All right, so now we're going to practice all of these things so that you are a master at safety and equipment and are ready for your first lab day.